Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. In the previous video, we finished our API in Express. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to be working in React. I'm going to close all these files because I'm done with this for now. We've tested the API, we made sure it's working. Okay, so the next step is going to be um, doing a NPM, well, First, we, I want to npm run dev. I want to run my dev server for my API. So that way I can access the API. I'm going to create a new terminal. And in this terminal, since I'm back in the main express folder, so above the backend folder, I now want to create another app for my front end. So these are going to be two separate apps. I'm going to have two separate servers running, one serving my back end, one serving my front end. So serving the front end, we want an, a, a React app. Now I'm going to use a template that I made for myself or you, that you can use technically. Um, okay. Uh, again, just trying to show you guys how to use this MPX dgit tool to be able to use your templates, but you can use them any from any username. You don't have to pull from your username. So if I do MPX dgit, um, Alex Merced coder. Then I'm pretty sure it's like my React template. We'll just call this front end. Uh, what did I write? Oh, I wrote npm. My bad. It's npx. npx dget because we, npm is to like install something or run something that's already installed on your machine. If you want to use a library one time without installing the library, you use npx. That's what that command does. So we're using the deget library or the dgit library one time without having to actually download the library. So that way we don't have to constantly be having it on our computer. Okay, so there, see it cloned this repo that I have. See, all I have to do is give it my GitHub username and my repo name. And then I could specify the branch. If you don't, it assumes master. So now I go to the front end here. Okay. And let's see here. I need a CD into this folder. And you could use my template too if you really, you know, uh, just type in the command that I just typed in. That's that's fine too. CD front end. It's not too far. It's pretty much create React app with router installed. I didn't really customize this particular one because it was the result of another class I taught teaching how to make a template. I was just getting everyone set up. I have more robust templates available through the Merced spin up tool. Okay, but I need to go in here. I need to do an npm install. So it installs all the dependencies and that's gonna take a while because it's React. So that's doing that just to give you a tour. And again, so these both will get a separate Git repo. So this will be one repo on your Git. So you'll have a repo on GitHub called backend and then another one called front end. And you're going to deploy them separately. You'll, we're going to end up deploying this back end folder to Heroku. We're going to end up deploying this front end folder to Netlify. Your repo has to make sure you have to make sure that your repo is set up in the folder with your package.json. Because Heroku and Netlify, when you upload, connect your Git repo, they're going to look at the first rung of the repo. So if they don't see package.json right there at the, the top, they're not going to know what to do and your deployment's not going to work. Okay, so just keep that in mind. What a lot of people try to do is they try to create one repo that has their backend and front end folder inside of it. And while that is possible, you could deploy it, but then you're essentially asking, you're basically asking Heroku to have a bunch of files it doesn't need because it's only going to deploy the backend part and you have to do some extra work to get it to work. Because um, you have to try to do it, make it not behave in its default way um, and try to get it to look in a subfolder, which is not what it's initially defaulted to do same thing with netlify so you're giving it the whole repo both folders when it's only going to deploy the front end folder and you have to kind of work around its defaults so it's like don't do that make one repo for the back end one repo for the front end so this project should have two ah, 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 github repos okay Never try to be sneaky and try to put more than one project in one GitHub repo. It's just not a good idea. There's no benefit to it. Um, there's, there's just no reason to do it. Don't do it. Okay, so that's done installing. Good. Now, what we're gonna do is just test writing our fetch for our 
uh, API. So we just want to practice it. So a good thing to do is create a new file called test.html. This is not going to be an actual file for our project. Um, like it'll be there, but it's not doing anything. It's not going to be part of our website. This is just really we're creating just a quick HTML file. Then we create a script tag. And we're just going to make sure that our API is working for, for our fetch calls. Okay, so we're going to just do our full CRUD fetches from here. Make sure that we write a fetch for each one so we can see how, make sure that it works. Okay. So, I mean, theoretically, well, let's see here. We First, we need to get a username. That's right. We have to get into the tokens and all that stuff. Yeah, this will get fun. Okay, so first we'll do a sign up route sign up okay so we have to do fetch uh, fetch and again the URL is HTTP slash slash w dot localhost not www is localhost 3000 and then this is going to be a post request so we have to pass in a second object to fetch. Fun times. Okay, and the second object basically tells fetch what to do. Like it's a post request. Oh, that's good to know. It needs to know the headers. Okay, the only header I need right now, and again, it's gotta be headers, not header. Oftentimes, if your stuff's not working, you're getting like an empty rec dot body. It's probably because you misspelled headers. You probably wrote header instead of headers. So it doesn't know that those are your headers because it can be more than one. Okay, I've made that mistake and have searched for hours wondering what's wrong with my API and because it was a missing S. So I'm emphasizing that now. Okay, so the only header I really want to pass here is I'm going to be sending JSON data. In your headers, one of the things you got to do when you're sending data to an API is specifying the format of that data. 99% of the time, you're probably going to be sending either JSON data or URL encoded data. And of those two, probably 75% JSON and 25% URL encoded. So the header that specifies what kind of data is being sent is uh, content type. And because it has a hyphen in it, we need to use quotation marks. Content type. And the content type is application json okay and if it was url encoded it would be like application x slash colon or x dash www dash url encoded you can always google it i had to google it for months before it finally stuck in my head you just google you know uh, content type header or json header or url encoded header and you should find the answer pretty quickly okay now we have that's the header, so that's going to tell our API that we sent over JSON data. So that way, that express.json middleware parses the body. Otherwise, the express.json middleware goes, oh, I don't see any JSON data here, and doesn't do anything. So that's necessary. Okay, that's got to be exactly spelled correctly. So that's always when you want to double, triple check. Okay, and then there's body. So we want to send the body, which we want to send a JSON string. So the way you send the JSON string is you're going to send over a JavaScript object and pass it through the JSON.stringify function, which takes that JavaScript object and turns it into a JSON string. Okay, so that's JSON. JSON.stringify. And we are going to turn this object, which is going to say username Alex Merced2 and password and that's just a, that should be a string and password username password cheese okay so there that's my fetch call and just like any fetch call then the next step is we're going to take the we have to take the dot then then it's response which we're going to take the response and then return response.json. Okay. And then we're going to take the next dot then. And that's where we can actually do stuff. 
So here's my data from the actual API call, which should just be the user, as you saw when we did our test. Console.log data. Okay, because again, I'm just testing this out. Okay, cool. So let's do this. I'm going to open this up with Live Server. Okay, again, there's nothing on the screen because there shouldn't be. So then I go here and I don't see a, it says status 404, not found. So that makes me wonder, are we serving this on port 3000? So let me go back and take a look at my other terminal to see if the servers still run it. It's running, but it got a 404. So let me start thinking about this. So it did receive, yay, Morgan Logger for making it confirming that it did receive the request. So there was that post request at 404, 1.4 milliseconds, just didn't, uh, for some reason, fail. HTTP localhost 3000, method post, headers, oh, that, the URL's wrong. It's slash auth, slash sign up. There we go. And, and now see, we see, we see the successful post came in. Okay, so that came in, so that means I go back here, I should see the console log of the user. And there it is. The Alex Merced 2 user got created. Good. Okay. So now we have the structure for our sign up for the, our fetch sign up. So I'm going to copy that and then comment this out. Okay, because I don't want to do that again. Okay. And then what we're going to do is change this to login. Okay, which is still going to be a post application that all pretty much is the same. So this sh that should pretty much be your fetch for your login. So now I should be able to go here and then there's the token. I'm going to save that token because we're going to use it. We're going to need that token for our test. So I'm going to save that token in a variable. Const token equals. Okay. There you go. So there's the token. Okay. So we can refer to it now. Actually, I should probably put that control X. Well, this is going to be login. Okay. And this should kind of happen after this. There's my token. And then I'm going to copy this again and then comment this out. And now let's do our, let's do our, you know, uh, first let's do a create. So slash slash create, because we need to create a note. Okay, so that's gonna be now to slash note, which is still gonna be a post. We don't wanna create a note called password. We want to have, just the note be passed in. So note, this is a note. Okay, and then that should work, except we need to pass in the auth header. So notice, I still need the authorization header. So here's where that token comes into play. So we need another header called authorization with an uppercase A. And then here, we pass in the word bearer. And actually, I need backticks. So it's bear space the token okay and there we go so that should work so let's take over here and take a look did we get back if error failed to execute fetch on window value is not valid byte string let's take a look here fetch uh, Uh, token body dot stringify note this is a note response dot json authorization bear token post yeah this is all good let's refresh let's go take a look over here so we've seen these posts was there a successful post at all not yet now the question is why? Why is that not succeeding? Um, let's go to my server.js slash node. Yes, it did work 
in our fail to execute fetch on window value is not valid byte string so I think it's complaining about the URL HTTP localhost 3000 slash note that's a valid byte string let's keep going here token 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 exists right there so that should be fine so let's refresh this one more time let's, here's the way you find the mistake okay what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to the network and refresh see there's the request so I'm gonna well, I want to see the details of that request so what I want to do is bring this window up there we go let's do this again huh, I'm not even seeing the fetch happen so something's weird here fetch did I not close this? Yeah, I mean, I closed the thing. Where's the script tag in? Yeah, there's the ending of the script tag. They should be local host, method post, headers, content type, application JSON, yes. Authorization, bear token, body, JSON, not stringify. Note, yeah. Let's go back. Well, we are on the server screen and the server's still running. Okay, so this is why you want to do this before you start building your React app so you get this all out of the way. But I am not seeing the, the failed request. I don't even see the request. That's fine. Maybe it's more clear in here. Const token. Bearer token. Content type. Method. Hmm. I was complaining about line 35. So line 35. Yeah, that's the fetch there. Authorization. I mean, here's what I'll do. I'll put this in quotation marks, see if that makes it happy. But I don't think that's it. No. Fail to execute fetch on window. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rerun live server. I'm not sure if that's an actual. It's not a valid byte string. Okay, well, let's see here. When all else fails, let's use the Google. Okay, so apparently other people have had this window. You need this function, yada, yada, yada. I get all that. What is the answer? Uh, something to me when I try to add authorization header to my fetch calls. In my case, it was caused by new line character in the header string, i.e., bear charging the new line to a space. Oh, interesting. Control Z. Yeah, no, that's there's no new line there though. Um. Bear. I mean, that all looks like I don't see any s floating spaces or new line characters. Content type application JSON. So let's do it this way. I am going to change this from interpolation to just concatenation. So I need bear space and then plus the token. And let's see if that gets us a better result. Line 44. Hmm. 
funny thing is that it's receiving the request. The server receives the request, but it's not showing up here. So let me see here. Is there some sort of filter? Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's still not showing up though. Uh, preserve log, clear. I want to see all requests. WebSocket script. So usually I'm looking for, you, you'd see a failed request or something here. We are not seeing it. It's kind of weird. So it's recognizing that it tried to make the request here. The server is getting the failed request, so because we see the the failed request here, so that that is odd. Okay, so what I'm going to do, actually, is it? Uh, no. Let's see here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close live server. It might just be because I'm using a live server. And I want to see if I can just open this directly in the browser. Um, open containing folder. And let's open the test HTML right directly in the browser. Nope, still. So it's not because of live server. Uh, valid character in a key of the header object. I simply included the and this through the error inscribed. So. Hmm. So I'm assuming maybe I copied the the token wrong. Is that possible? Let's see here. Let's let's comment this out, and then re-comment out the login because we know that worked. See that worked. And. Let me copy this whole thing. And that's got to go here. That does look a little longer, so maybe I didn't copy all of it. So maybe that's the issue. So then I will uncomment this out. And let's see. That time it worked. Okay, so we created the note. So that was, must have been it. I copied over the token wrong. Okay. Oh, bug hunting. Okay, and again, but theoretically, I can see those calls to notes here. And I can, th you know, one of the things I want to look at to see if, what, is the token showing up right in the header. Because I can go over here to where it says headers and look at the headers for the request headers. Uh, request headers, authorization, content type. Except content type. We should show it somewhere in there. For some reason, I'm not seeing it. Uh, oh, I think it's this one we want. Yeah, here we go. So see, I can see the token there. And that's a good way to test to see if the token is actually showing up in the header or not. Uh, that kind of thing. Because sometimes what happens is your variable, you're using like the wrong variable name. And then this will show up as like undefined. So that's a good way to check. Also, sometimes the response gives you a little bit more detail when you look at it in the network tab. So this is a useful tool for figuring out what's wrong. Um, and when again, when worse comes to worse, you Google. Cool. But I think we get the idea that everything is working. So we've tested routes with auth. We've tested the login and sign up routes. Uh, they are working from our front end. So we got these nice boilerplates for our fetch requests. So the next step is going to be they actually start working in React, which we'll do in the next video.